I discovered succulents when I needed something that required lots of sunshine in my yard. And I grew to really enjoy succulents because of the variety that they have in leaf texture and color, etc. Now I had to learn a lot about succulents. I learned that succulents need between six to eight hours of sunshine every day. It can be in the form of um, in a pot on your windowsill, it can be in the ground, or it can be in a pot somewhere in your yard. Now the temperatures that succulents do require, they require between 60 and 80 degrees, ideally Fahrenheit. However, we rarely have those kind of temperatures. If the temperatures increase to about 90 to 100, 110, the succulents may uh, sunburn a little bit, but they'll recover from that. Now, if you get temperatures uh, 40 degrees or less Fahrenheit, then you might develop an area where the water in the succulent leaves will freeze. And then when they thaw out, you have a soggy mess. Now you have water needs of the succulent. The water needs of the succulent are very minimal. They like to have, they like to dry out in between. And when they dry out, they, they do just fine. You can let them dry out for a week if you're on vacation or whatever. In this next slide, you're gonna see a stem of a succulent and you can see how short the roots are. And because the roots are so, those pink things dangling down are roots. And because those roots are so short, you don't need to water them. The succulents do need also to be fertilized. And when I say fertilized, they do need to be fertilized usually in the spring when all of the growing is taking place. And I like to put um, also in the hot, hot summer when there's so much under stress. And so there you have it. You have the sunshine needs, you have the water needs, you have the, the temperature needs as well as the fertilization. Now for the fun part. As you can see, you have a lot of cells right there growing a lot of different succulents. I like to propagate my succulents. That's the fun part. My first assistant is gonna show you, there's my soil that I like to use. It's a mixture with a lot of sand in it and the sand allows the extra water to drain through. And when the water drains through, that means it doesn't sit around the roots. The pot she's showing you has a hole in the bottom and it allows the extra water to drain right through. Another thing that I use when I am propagating, I use rooting hormone that I stick the roots down in and um, before I stick it into the soil. And one thing I did discover recently is a moisture meter. This moisture meter will be reading on a number one. And if it reads any more than that, you have too much water and you'll need to let it dry out. So that moisture meter is really good. You can also stick your finger down in the soil. And if it's wet um, under the surface, then it's already taken care of. My next assistant is gonna show you um, another pro uh, one of the propagation methods of doing division. As you can see on this stem, there's a lot of little what they call pups. Here she is separating the pup growing out of the side of the stem with a small pair of scissors. Having a really difficult time, but she's persisting. And then she's gonna take her pot, once again with a hole in the bottom, She's going to take her cactus and succulent soil and fill the pot up. I cannot, I, I like to use this kind of soil because I think it grows, the succulents grow best in. You can use regular garden soil if you want to. Now she's going to take her little succulent and she's going to dabble the end of it in there and then place it into the pot. As you can see what she's doing. And this succulent, even though it doesn't need a lot of water, it will need water for a couple of days as it sets down at its roots. She's using an old uh, ketchup container because then I can direct the water exactly where it needs to go. My next assistant is gonna show you, if you can't have a division with a pup, here I take them and I snip these different kinds. And as you can see, there's some roots growing out of it. Simply by, I take those um, cuttings and I put them on the windowsill and they develop the roots all by themselves. 
And here those roots are again, growing out of the side of the stem. I haven't done a thing to them. They just do it all by themselves. And here is a bunch of leaves that fell off. The pink or the brown is where they callus over. And then, as you can see, Brody's showing you where they also develop some roots. Now he's gonna show you how he takes a pot and he's going to fill it with soil. And then he's going to uh, put it in rooting hormone and put it, put it into the pot. And he did water it after that too. Now I have enjoyed working with succulents, as I said at the very beginning, because they come in such a variety of textures, in leaf colors, in leaf um, patterns. You have some spindly looking ones. You have some very thorny looking ones. And sometimes you do have to watch out for the thorns on them. So much variety, so many different colors. This next one actually developed different colors when it got cold and it stayed that way through the summer. So you never know what to expect with succulents. I've used succulents in making my fairy gardens because they adapt well to the little structures that you put in a fairy garden. Here is an old haul out log, a shovel with some dirt at the bottom with covered with uh, granite, an old bird bath. And I like to mix these different succulents. It just, it is just fun to see what I can create. And there you have it about succulents. As you can see, there's a lot to learn. This was about succulents in a nutshell. There's lots of information out there, a lot of podcasts that you can look, find out about. And I hope you have fun with all these different things that you have just learned.